Welcome back, everyone, to our Q&A portion of our conversation on Real Men Women Have Curves at Justice and Spirituality on Screen. Welcome back, Delmi. Welcome back, Martin. Thank you. Very All good. right. Here's some questions. Question one, Martin, this one's for you, and it is a heavyweight. And uh, just to give this question some context, we were talking a bit about um, fulfillment, coming of age, coming into your own. So the question, Martin, here is, is there such thing as destiny? Ah, it's a light one. Yeah, you're right. It was yeah, <laughs> easy. <laughs> so easy. For a Friday morning, sure. Why not? <laughs> yes. Let's just say that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. No. Um, I guess uh, if I could just weave into it in my own words, mm -hmm. uh, in our tradition i don't know if we use the word destiny um we certainly there's certainly what we call the gift of free will um i wish i knew a little bit more about what context in terms of asking about destiny we're trying to get at but uh there is the this eternal free will of the soul too so even after even after death uh we believe we don't lose our individuality you know, free will continues. So destiny, when I think of destiny, there's like some ultimate end that's static. I don't think that that's kind of what our tradition says. Our tradition, it's, it's, it'll be kind of eternally dynamic. So we're still going to be, uh, you know, we're, we're still going to have free will. Um, mm -hmm. So at this point, I'm kind of, you know, just, uh, I'm trying to contrasting, you know, destiny, free will uh, against each other, but it kind of does depend on how you define destiny mm. um, as well. If it's just like predetermined type of thing, certainly something that um, I don't know, you know, I, I certainly would go more with our tradition in terms of, we, we don't know, uh, you know, in a sense too, people get uncomfortable and it's like, well, God, does God know what we're going to choose? Well, God is God. But the fact that the experience of our everyday living, we, we, we experience very clearly that we have a decision. So as long as one's idea of destiny <clears throat> doesn't take away from the sense that you are, you, we have to live fully alert and choose and discern like we were talking about in our um, conversation, I think the idea is itself is is all right um but certainly there's a there's there are callings in our life and that can manifest in many ways so um, i'm just trying to i guess like work out the word destiny how how might one live with the word destiny if you know that doesn't make you more narrow mm -hmm. you know like this is my destiny and i have to do everything I can do to get there. Like, cause sometimes that doesn't leave room for God and discernment. So anyway, that's a little bit of splatter shot, but, but that's appreciate it. No, take on that word. better answer than I could have given. Thank you, Martin. Tell me, I'm going to throw this one to you. Do you see a child? Oh, I'm sorry. I want to, the... Yeah, you know what? Let me go with this one. This is a kind of a heavyweight too, one for you too, Delmi. Here, we're starting with the heavyweights today. <laughs> Do you see a child going oh, away to college is, a, 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 is, a, is one way of breaking up a family? Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> oh, man, that's, okay, that's a tough one. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Happy Friday. <laughs> we're getting all the heavyweight questions first. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Delmi's got it. Delmi's got you know, it. you never think, and we're just talking about movies. What the heck? Yeah. You know, um, I personally don't see it as um, breaking up the family because I think family is really central to our culture. 
And I think having really strong bonds with the parents, the siblings, and, you know, the extended family are really important. And so, for example, for me growing up, I didn't go too far, um, but I did have to move out of the house. And, you know, we missed each other, but we made it a point to call each other every single day, sometimes multiple times a day. You know, I would come back home on the weekends. I still made it a point to continue to be involved with the rest of the family in terms of trying to make get out to events as much as I could, continuing to have those conversations with them via phone. Um, This was, you know, right before, this was before um, we could FaceTime people, so we couldn't really do that. But, you know, keeping in touch through the internet, um, sending chats and all of that. So I, I think when a family is supportive of their child becoming independent in their own terms and going away to college, whether it's moving out and going a couple cities away or moving to a completely different state. I think as long as um, there's open communication, you know, that the family is still intact. It can look a little different for a couple of years as they move away. But again, you know, family being so central to many cultures, um, we'll continue to keep that bond intact. So I think family dynamics can look a little differently, but um, we have technology and that can help the family continue to stay in communication and in a different version of being intact. Very good. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Delmi, I think this one will be for you as well. Um, how can I make college affordable for me and my family? You know, um, I would say definitely exploring the different options. Um, For example, if a student knows what um, college um, they want to go to, I would say apply to a great great variety. So for example, here we have the UCCSU system, which are the largest two systems um, in the state of California. So apply to a couple within the UCCSU. Um, Also take a look at community colleges and really, you know, apply for FAFSA and see what financial aid package they can offer and make that decision um, based off of that. And also applying to lots of scholarships. There are a lot of nonprofit organizations that put together a list of scholarships that students can apply. They include the deadline, general information about them. And these are scholarships that students already um, pursuing an undergraduate degree can go ahead and apply to. So another recommendation I would say suggest is going to your financial aid office you have great um, staff members there that can help you understand you know your financial aid package if you have work study definitely take advantage of that that's a great learning experience that you get on campus in a position that values your work and you know we have lots of great um, staff members and faculty that can help also become a guide and understand that school comes first. So again, very flexible with the work hours. Um, and something else I would say is make an appointment with your financial aid resource um, officer and, you know, talk to them a little bit more about yourself, try to look up scholarships and see what they recommend. That's something that I did um, when I was at UCI. I would go to the um, scholarship fairs and get to know the staff members there and they would be able to recommend scholarships based on my background, my experience. Um, For example, I'm thinking of um, Maldef. That's um, an organization that publishes a long list of scholarships that one can look up to, that one can look up. So definitely scholarships um, help make um, college more affordable. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Martin, I think this one might be ideal for you. Can you give us an example of what spiritual discernment or exercise might look like? I think based on what we discussed the other day. Discernment or exercise might look like. Yeah, absolutely. And spiritual discernment is usually that word comes up when you're uh, thinking about slightly larger things in life rather than like, for instance, what, you know, toothpaste do I want to use today? You don't need to discern that. You just pick a toothpaste. But uh, what are our ways? Uh, what are ways? I'm sorry, what was? Yeah, give us an example of what example. it looks like. Yeah, I, I think, um, for instance, if um, a young person's dating somebody and, you know, there are differences in their religious backgrounds and 
the families, their, both their families have, you know, apprehension about them continuing to date, for instance, is very specific, you know. Uh, so discernment is, should I stay, you know, with this person or not? How does that look like? I love this person and how is this going to work with both my families? So discernment in that situation comes in to, uh, to appear like, first off, I would ask, do I have a relationship? Like, how's my relationship with God? How am I doing with God? Am I, you know, is God just someone that I go to like in those dire times of need, you know, is it just a vending machine God to me? Or do I have like an actual relationship with God? And that might be a good place to start in terms of bigger things in life, like this relationship where you want to lean on the ultimate secure relationship with, which is oneself and God. And so that takes cultivation time. Am I making out time to just listen to God, let God love me and let God inform my life so that in these particular moments in life um, with relationship or, or when these difficult kind of dilemmas come up, um, discernment looks like, okay, I'm going to trust you, God, because we're in a relationship, me and you, God, and I'm going to trust that day by day, you're going to help me unfold this together. So discernment isn't, you know, how do I, you know, get a clear cut answer right away? It's, it's first and foremost, how do I reestablish deep in my connection with God and trust that God will kind of help me develop the answer over time, which is why I love the movie so much. Like you just don't know what's going to happen, but, but we're not turning away from the everyday details of needing to help, you know, um, you know, Anna's family, like honoring all the, the, the complexities, not just trying to opt for the simple, you know what, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. This is, this is what I need to do. I'm going to go and just cut everything off. I really honor, you know, I think God uh, is a God who walks with us day by day and honors those things that are good within the complexities. Um, mm -hmm. So again, with a situation, uh, spiritual discernment looks is about reconnecting with God and and you know often oftentimes seeing the invitation of God saying, "Hey, I want you to go grow deeper with me as well. I want you to you know I want you to trust me in a real way and make time for me." So that's that's one way I would go about it. Very good. Got a little time left. So why don't we close with this question? This is for the both of you. Given your similar, I'm, I'm assuming referring to both of you, given your similar experiences to Anna's, the character in the film, what should we expect if there was a sequel? What would be the next part of her journey? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. No worries, no. <laughs> That's a great question. Yeah. You know, I would love, um, if there were a sequel, I would love to see them follow her story and see her experience in New York. Um, I would really love for them to explore, you know, how it's going for her in school, what, you know, what other activities she's joining. I mean, we're left with that image of her walking so confidently and with lots of purpose. And I, I see, you know, her feeling like, looking like she's feeling accomplished. So I would really love for them to explore what her new life um, holds for her and also seeing what's happening with her family in East Los Angeles. You know, like how are they keeping the bonds of family together? What happened, you know, with the mother? Did she end up, you know, accepting that on a move to New York? What's going on with Estella? Is, is her business thriving? How is the father doing? What happened to Abuelito? You know, all these aspects of, of family and seeing what happened, what's the next step in their life. I would, I would love to see what would happened. Yeah. Just along those lines is what Delmi said too. I, I, it, it's great to see or imagine what she might do just now with mm -hmm. like, I don't know, metaphorically growing her new wings and just kind of out there, ex you know, just experimenting, living her life. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, with all the, the, you know, mistakes that young people have to make, like, you know, to be brave, to just live life, but also to see, you know, maybe kind of a full circle, mm -hmm. you know, come back to check in with family and, and, you know, rediscover for herself why she loves, you know, mm -hmm. her family, what, what that commitment looks like. 
Yeah. Um, just like what Delmi said too with her mom too, it would be, would be great to see an arc for her mom as well. Mm-hmm. Like just buds of new understanding happening. Um, yeah, those those are things that would be great to see in a, in a sequel. In the same tenor too, where it's like, you know, not skipping over the everyday common mm-hmm. um, issues that arise. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this director did it so well. <laughs> oh, I agree. Yeah, it'd be great to see what career she pursues, you know, kind of like how you shared going full circle, like, would she want to go back to East Los Angeles Mm -hmm. and become a teacher? Or is she going to go into, you know, for example, like the fashion world, you know, how she was, um, when she was working with her sister, Estella, she's talking about the dresses and how they're not made to fit bodies that look like her. So I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, like, what career is she going to pursue? Because I can already imagine her putting a positive spin on whatever she pursues to follow. So I think that would be, you know, really interesting to see like what happens next. Like, is she giving back to her community? How is she able to do that? And really see the family dynamic evolving. So I think that would be wonderful for us to see. And like you mentioned, um, you know, what are the struggles that they're continuing to face now? How, what does that look like for them? And how are they overcoming those obstacles? Totally. And sexual identity, you know, right on top of that too. Like she's such a bold character. Um, you know, it would be great to see how she navigates it within herself and with friends, you know, if there's new developments and, you know, self-discovery and all that kind of stuff, like what, what's going to be her new community out there and who are the, who are the, the new village that will, Mm -hmm. that will, uh, cultivate this kind of, you know, exploration within oneself. Mm -hmm. The excitement of the early twenties. (laughs) <laughs> yes yes <laughs> promise and peril well yes. thank you both again very much for your time uh thank you uh, for those of you out in cyberspace that submitted questions uh this has been a real um wonderful conversation these past few days and i'm grateful for everyone's time uh this concludes this season of justice and spirituality on screen as our academic year comes to a close so the next uh time we'll all be together is in the fall for the so that calendar will post probably in the next few months so professor wheeze father no best of luck on wrapping up the school year and we'll see everybody hopefully in fall 2022 enjoy your summer awesome